Wait, don't people know the Ducal Guard captain? Won't they be suspicious of a person traveling with both the Witcher and the captain? This vampire, have you ever faced its sort before? I have. How did it end? Did you kill it? Didn't have to fight him. Hadn't killed anyone. Have you ever heard of anyone defeating such a vampire? Know of a man who defeated one, sure. But he didn't manage to kill it. Ultimately, only another vampire can kill a vampire. That's hard. Even if I want to kill him? If I don't have someone's help, say Regis's, then we can't do it. And we all know that Regis will not really want me to um, kill that laugh. Hmm. Panthers have attacked the wagon. We must help. Stay back, Your Grace. We shall see to this. Oh help. no! Save us! Whoa! Show me what you got. Hold up. Thank you, beast. Be gone. A random wagon not related to anything? Help! Save us! Whoa! Alright, everybody. Back you beast! Be gone. I need to take some potions again. Help! Save us! <laughs> Damien, do you want to do something? Back you beast! Be gone. Ooh. Done. Time to move on. If, if not for you, we'd have been done for. Thank you. You saved our lives. Hooray! Yeah, good luck out there. It's a dangerous place. All right, let's keep going, Your Grace. I mean, Anna. Goodbye. Tell me more about this vineyard, Castel Ravello. It's the best in Old Toussaint. An old master of the winemaking trade runs it, Fabrizio. He trustworthy? He's held his post for years. There's never been a problem, till now. I wish to know your thoughts, Geralt. The Sonrial stain, how did it wind up on the king? Ah. Is someone from the vineyard blackmailing the vampire? Could be a servant, could be the steward. Could be the wine was just stolen from the estate. We shall know when we arrive. It's not far now. We've been here before. Haven't we? Looks familiar. You can't. Yes, we have. Captain de la Tour. We did not expect any visitors from the palace. How are affairs at court? Doubtless you've heard of the Beast of Beauclair. Well, we've our hands full. Especially since the rogue last attacked in the palace gardens. I trust her illustrious highness was not harmed. Kind of you to ask, Master Fabricio. I am well. Your... your grace? We were not warned. I shall order the salon prepared at once. That won't be necessary. As you can see, we are not here on an official visit. Naturally. Might I ask then what has brought you to Castel Ravello? Talking to people is often better than just looking around ourselves because they have a better context for what usually goes on here. But ideally, we'd be able to do both. Came to see you. Got some questions. In this land, it is seen as polite to introduce oneself before asking any questions. This is Geralt of Rivia, a witcher. He has come to Toussaint on my personal invitation. Which is to say... Which is to say I expect you to treat him with the utmost respect. Of... of course, Your Grace. Did you hear that, witcher? Fabricio will be delighted to answer your every question. Want to talk about saint Real? I am at your service. No, nah, I think that was kind of unnecessary. We could have just said, I'm Geralt of Rivia. Can I ask you some questions? The Saint Real. How many vineyard workers have access to it? One might say only I do. 
Not like you make the wine all alone. At least a dozen others work here. I see you've little notion how wine is made. Grapes travel a long road before they become Sonreal. The workers assist me only to the stage of fermentation. I see to the maceration personally and let no one near the fat. Workers, again, assist me during barreling, but then I seal the aging barrels myself, each and every one. The wine lies in the cellar, gains character. Once this process is complete, it becomes Sonreal. And as it happens, only I have the key to the cellar in question. So you're saying even though a lot of workers help out with the process, even with the barreling part, that still doesn't count because at that point, it's not Sanrial yet. It's only when it stays in the cellar for however long. Who? Who hauls the barrels to the palace? We've our own garrison. Guards who have served here for years and would answer with their heads for the wine. We'll not get anywhere asking questions, I see. It's a waste of time. Your Grace? How am I to understand this? Master Fabricio, we have proof someone's gained access to Sonreal. Someone who should not have, which means one of two things. Either you lie to our face, or you are an idiot who has had wine stolen from under his nose and not even realized it. In either case, you shall answer for it. But... but... Silence! And listen. I shall inspect the barrels in person, thus giving you time to reflect. When I return, I expect to hear answers. Remind me, where is this Sonreal stored? In... In the main cellar, around the corner. I'll show you. I shall find it. Give me the key to the cellar and wait here. Oh, of course, Your Grace. Here it is. Come, Witcher. God damn. <sighs> we shall wait here, Master Fabricio. There is a Chinese saying. Accompanying a lord, a king, a queen. It's much like accompanying a tiger. Ooh. What if Fabricio's blackmailing the vampire? Considered that? He has his flaws, but I would never suspect him of such a thing. He's been very loyal. He owes all he has to me. His father frittered away the family fortune. He left his son an encyclopedic knowledge of wine. That is all. Fabricio lived as a beggar until I appointed him steward of Castel Ravello. Only then did he come into his own. So you don't really think he did it either. But you yelled at him like that earlier. It doesn't have to be... Like, we don't know at which point the Sanriel was taken, so it doesn't have to be here. It really could be someone from the Ducal family. But in total, we don't know how many people come into contact with us. So where do we start? Let us see if all the barrels are present. Here's the inventory ledger. Yeah, make me do it. Read the wine register. Mm, vintner's log. Fermentation completed with no complications. Tapped above sediment line. Here it is, barreling. Mm, everything lines up at first glance, neatly and thoroughly documented. Then we must follow our other lead. Benoit said the stain came from the 1269 vintage. Let's find it. By the way, I really love Anna Henrietta, um, her animations, I guess. Even when she walks around, she has her hands clasped together and all. It's all very regal looking. I love it. The history of SS. Estest, often considered one of the chief treasures of the people of Tucson, is the best known of the wines cultivated in that region. It is hard to determine when, exactly, the first barrels of Estest were matured, though we can surmise it must have been around the time of the first human forays into the duchy's present land. 
What is certain is that this wine truly gained fame only during the reign of Duchess Adela Marta, who held SS in near divine esteem and for that reason bestowed upon Castel Ravello the privilege of being the official ducal vineyard. She also reserved a special place in the cellars of the Beauclair Palace for Estes, and to this day, two barrels of every vintage are ceremoniously deposited on those shelves. The tapping of any of them is, by order of the ducal edict, vino sanctus est, punishable by death through dragging behind a team of horses. Accompanying a lord is like accompanying a tiger. The whims of lords and lordesses. Ervalus, 1269 vintage. Ervalus, I like it, quite dry. An excellent wine. You've good taste. Thank you. Beauclair White, Nilfgaardian Lemon. Whoa, you guys really haven't been taking care of this place that well. Or maybe because nobody ever comes in here. They just finish off the wine and then nobody ever visits it until it's considered done. And then how would you know it's all okay? Est est. Est est. Think everyone and their mothers heard of this wine. Among the best in the world. Castel Ravello is famous for it. And yet it's covered in cobwebs. Wooden hammer. Why? Barrel tap. Why is there a random wooden hammer there? Hmm. Your grace, you should help me look around too. I know you're not used to that, but <laughs> might be this one. There's a book. A short history of Pomino. Though Pomino does not enjoy the fame of Essest or even Ervalus, it still attracts a considerable number of admirers and remains among the best wines in the world. Few, however, know how close the world came to losing its slightly acrid, surprisingly deep aftertaste. The cause of this averted disaster was Phylloxera mortifera, that is to say, Phylloxera the deadly, a species of aphid whose sudden attack nearly wiped out all existing vines of this variety. For many weeks, no one was able to exterminate this pest and it seemed Pomino was doomed to extinction. In the end, however, the aphids were defeated by ducal alchemists and a carefully selected group of vintners was appointed to ensure its vines took root at Castel Ravello once more. Some experts from the time of the plague claim their restoration efforts introduced cross-contaminants and never again were they able to extract from this grape that same bottomless flavor as before. Better than nothing, I suppose. So this is Pomino. Or Fiorano. Fiorano. Dandelion's favorite. Adores it. Ah, yes. That sophisticated palate of his. I can't tell if she's being sarcastic or not. Ow! Your grace! Your grace! Gosh. Pomino. On this side. Got Pomino over here. No comment. <laughs> okay, we might have to go upstairs. If this is such a prestigious wine, it might be kept elsewhere. Oh, look at these crests. It's gotta be this one. Yeah. Uh, wrong year? San Real. 1270 vintage. That's the wrong year. Keep looking. Thought I could read the book, but nope. Excuse me, Your Grace. Whoops. All of the ones on the top here, it seems like they have the crest. So they're all San Riel, but all of different years. Oh. Right here, 1269. What now? Let's see if any barrels are empty. Wanna open them? For now, a knock will suffice. If you hear a hollow thud, we will have found what we seek. But all we know of on that paper scrap is one drop. It doesn't necessarily mean 
A barrel was emptied. Full. Full. Pretty thick thudding. This one's full too. Your Grace, please help. Full. This one's full too. Last but not least. Full. Hmm. Looks like all the barrels are full. Dead end, I'm afraid. Full they are. The question is, are they full of Sanrial? Grab a tap and a hammer. We shall open them one by one and taste. Ready. We can start. Can we grab some cheese too? Oh, that's why we got the hammer and the barrel tap. Finally, walking around looting everything is paying off. <laughs> we didn't knock this one. Ready. Step aside. Oh, you want to taste it? Right, because it's ducal wine. None of my business. So? Mmm. I'd recognize this taste anywhere. This one is good. What about this one? Revolting, bitter, plonk. Could have gone sour while aging. Impossible. This is not wine. This is contaminated refuse that should never have made it into a barrel. The fact that it did was no accident, I'm sure. Master Fabricio, let's see what he has to say about it. Oh my god. Master Fabricio, I am very disappointed. But your grace, I... You are a step away from losing your head. Speak the truth and you might yet keep it. I... I, I admit it. I, I... I sold a barrel of Sorreal. I beg you to forgive me. Why did you do it? I couldn't resist. The sum they offered, it was enormous. I gave in. Is what I provide not enough? I wished to buy back my family's estate. For here, nothing is truly mine. I've a roof over my head, ample food to eat, but what is a nobleman without land of his own? I shall tell you everything if you agree to show me mercy. Uh, you don't get to set the terms here. <laughs> Who'd you sell the wine to? A few weeks past at the pheasantry, a rich nobleman approached me. He, he called himself a diplomat, well-connected at court. He suggested we embark on an enterprise. Some of his clients had offered dizzying sums for even a drop of Sonreal. He was to serve as intermediary. This man's name. He never revealed it. He was tall, black-haired, and spoke with a foreign lilt. He claimed to hail from Sintra. I've no Sintrian aristocrat at court. Sintra? Hmm. First thing I think of would be Amir, since he did live in Sintra for a while, but... He's not actually from Sintra. Really thought nobody'd find out. I was a fool. Very foolish. I beg you, Your Grace, you must forgive me. Oh, this is really bad because... This guy sold a barrel to another guy, but the other guy is selling it to a bunch of other people. It's like a spider web of connections now. Wine itself. How do you hand it over? We met under the cover of darkness in the ruins of Fort Astre. 
a dozen or so men came to collect. Armed men, the kind that stink of trouble. I had hauled the barrel there, they transferred it to their cart, and we went our separate ways. That's it? That the last you ever saw of them? They... that is to say, a, a few days passed, a, a messenger arrived. He said they wished to buy another barrel and, well, I've prepared it, have it ready to deliver. That's enough. Know all we need to know. Your Grace, I beg your forgiveness. Get out of my sight. Captain, have your men take Master Fabrizio to the dungeon. He must answer for his crime. High treason the charge. What now, Witcher? Is the punishment death? We set a trap. Need to catch the wine thieves. Sintrian Noble could be our blackmailer. Next, transport. I'll take it to Fort Astra. Damien and his soldiers will cover me. For once, I agree with you. We will do as you say. Let me know when you are ready. Oh, frick, let's do it now. See no reason to wait. Let's get going. We will set out now. Position ourselves before you arrive. You take the cart and meet us there. Fine. When the handoff begins, watch for my signal. Is the Sintra noble the blackmailer or someone he sold it to? Why would they be so careless to drop it? The Sanriel wine. Specifically that one. Out of all the wine. Almost feels deliberate. We were here before, but there was nothing. Relax. Now we wait. Favorite Vintner. Whoa, that guy has a six pack. Faintly. It's not him. <laughs> they took a really long time. These don't look like nobles. They're just randoms. I thought the noble himself would show up because he would want to make sure it's actually Samriel. But it seems to be just low ranking lackeys here for now. Tawny Owl, Hangman's Venom. And we probably want to take a lot of potions just for toxicity. Mostly the coctions, not even just these random potions here. Which, I mean, I guess we can do. Uh, Arch Griffin was that really good one, right? But it's a little bit too crazy. How about today, let's try... Reduces damage based on... Oh, less weight carried means less damage taken. <laughs> Uh, right now, we, we, we're we not carrying that much right now. We could do that. Mm, superior full moon, something nice and easy. Petri. Sure, let's just down a whole bunch. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> 98 toxicity. That might be a tad too much. <laughs> my health! Oh! Oh my god, now I've really done it. Can I really fight like this? I think my toxicity might be a tad too high. <laughs> You'll never learn. Whoa! You crossed the wrong man. This is the main guy here. Hornets. Oh. 
There we go. Oh, one more. Oh, Damien, get out of there! <laughs> Sorry, give you a bit of a burn. Faster! Faster! He's a witch! Boom! Sorry, guys. Is it just me, or did we agree you'd wait for my signal? That was the plan, but... Great shot. Good thing you reacted. Can't say how that would have ended otherwise. At your service. Oh. It was a good fight. We managed to capture one of the scoundrels. Let's ask him a few questions. Come on. Witcher, a moment. I was wrong about you. <laughs> I'm glad to see we're making friends, because I totally thought Geralt was going to be like, oh, these stupid people not listening to me. And I wonder if he would say this right now, de la Tour, if I actually did say that. Well, had no reason to trust me, and I didn't do much to change that. True, you are not the most endearing of men. At any rate, I see the effort you put forth. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Let us go to her grace. She awaits nearby. What? <laughs> God. Not at all surprised. Expected she'd want to oversee this personally. The master's eye fattens the cough. You're beginning to understand that, I see. This prisoner of yours, bring him to me. We must ask him some questions. You know, it's supposed to be my investigation, but... Anna Henrietta has been doing, like, everything. Captain, do the honors. Who sent you? His name is Dog. They say he plowed your mother. Once again, who sent you? Your nun's lover. They call him... Wait. If he doesn't wish to speak, he needn't. I can think of several other ways he can be helpful. I'm certain the Witcher will need bait to lure the beast of Beauclair. What? what? Mm. We don't actually have to use him as a bait. And I don't think it would work anyway, because he's not one of the five people. Sure can. Fresh out. In that case, he's all yours. Captain, have your men find me a strong rope. Kind that won't snap when we hang this fellow from a tree. R rope Live bait. Great for monsters. Provided they catch the scent of its blood. But I'll see to that. What? No. Crikey, no! Don't let him! Stop screaming. Save your strength. Got a long night ahead of you. No! Don't let him! I I'll talk! <laughs> he has an arrow through his shoulder, and he's scared of the rope. Barrels. Where were you gonna take them? I don't know. Captain, need that rope after all. I truly don't know. Hornet's the leader. Only he ever knew where to go. But he lies over there, dead. That one. The first barrel went to a warehouse at the port, but where this one was bound, I don't know. I, I speak true. You must believe me. Who hired you? He... he'll kill me! Ought to be worried about me right now. Who is he? Go on, man. Spit it out. The Cintrian. That is what they call him. I've never seen him, but I know he mustered the men for this caper. That's what they said, that we were working for the Cintrian. I don't know anything else. I swear it. Take him away. Throw him in the dungeon. He shall await trial there. Captain, we ride to town. Gather your men and seek out the Cintrian. Someone else must have seen him, must know of him. Yes, Your Grace. I'll report to the palace as soon as I learn anything. I shan't return to the palace. Our mission has not yet ended. The Witcher and I will await you at the guard post near the port. Okay. 
Let's go to town. He's late. Relax, he'll come. There's something I'd like to know. How can you be so damned calm? Side effect of my mutations. We witchers rarely get the jitters. What if something has happened to him? Captain seems like a man who can take care of himself. Perhaps he can, but this Cynthian appears to be no common bandit. He managed to steal ducal wine from under my guardsman's gnosis. We only learned of it through a fortunate coincidence. And it was he who specified the victims for the vampire. One must be exceptionally confident to blackmail such a monster. I guess we're all assuming that the Sindrian is the blackmailer himself, not someone that he sold the wine to. Oh, hmm. Still don't know this Sindrian's behind the kidnapping and blackmail. Might have just handled the theft of the wine. Even if it's so, he then sold the wine to the blackmailers. As I see it, that makes him an accomplice. Need to find the Sintrian, whether or not he's responsible for the murders. Even if none of it's his doing, he could still know our blackmailer's identity. Besides, it's one thing to know who ordered the killings. Other thing entirely and just as important is why they... Someone's coming. Captain, why so long? We expected you hours ago. This Sintrian does not work alone. We are fighting an organization, not one man. Bandits attacked us, not a small force either. One of my boys has a broken arm, another a shattered knee, lamed for life. And the word on the street is there's a hefty bounty on your head, Geralt. In Tucson? In Anna Henrietta's territory? Used to it. Not the first time I've been hunted. Must you always? Now, <laughs> the port warehouse where the wine was delivered, we identified it, then learned who had hired it out. This proved to be a beggar, a stand-in. We found him. He admitted all. A man had paid him to sign the lease, a man he met while begging outside the pheasantry. There, fate lent us a hand. A waitress recalled spilling wine on a nobleman who spoke with a Cintrian accent. What did he look like? Her description was not helpful. Handsome, well-dressed, with a beard. No distinguishing marks. This could be anyone. But she remembered his female companion very well, as she recognized her. On the Cintrian's arm was Cecilia Bellant. The singer? I've heard of her. She said to be gifted, fairy. The same. We went to her home immediately. Cecilia was not there, but we questioned her servants. A chambermaid claimed Cecilia is to meet a Cintrian gentleman tonight. She'd invited him to a reception mounted by the Mandragora. The Mandragora? What's that? A club, an affiliation of local artists. Painters, sculptors, troubadours and dancers. Never heard of it. They exude a mystique, consciously, I think. Behaving like an exclusive cabal. Artistic elites. Every now and again they mount soirees. Only wealthy patrons are invited. All arrive in elaborate masks, then drink and flirt. It's like high society stuff. Gotta nab the Cintrian. Seems we have to go to that get-together. You read my mind, Witcher. I shall gather my men. Surround the establishment. Not a mouse will squeeze No, 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 no. Out of the question. If the Cintrian truly does have men about the city, he will find out and escape once again. Duchess is right. Need to be careful. Best go there, blend in with the crowd. Precisely what we shall do. We, oui, Your Grace. Geralt and I. In that sort of company, the Witcher could use my help. Where's the event gonna be Oh, held? wow. The Mandragora always assembles at the same place. A residence in Oatville. Oatville? It's a very distinguished district. 
Geralt, you must don appropriate attire. Then meet me in Oatville in Mountebank Alley. Okay. Whatever you say, Your Grace. <laughs> yeah, you should. I'm losing a lot of health still because of my toxicity here. Since we're not fighting, let's white honey everything. Ooh, it's a lot of Audacious effort to get Euphoria to going. Him, but we'll get him. If we're going to another party, that means it's time to bust mm. out the Nilf Guardian set from the stash, the right? <laughs> just in case. Goodness. Good luck. I hope you get the bastard. How is her grace gonna help me out though? Is she actually mm. gonna be going as the I Duchess? The patrols, just in case. Or just as my female companion. Everybody knows what she looks like though. Where are we anyway? Just some random house in Sintra. Audacious rat, the Cintrian. But we'll get him. Case, one-armed Adelard. Pseudonym, one-armed Adelard. Real name unknown, age unknown, appearance. Witnesses describe him as a man of average height and a muscular, boxy, even build. Dark eyes, nose clearly has been broken repeatedly. Distinguishing marks, arm cut off below the elbow. Whoa, that's... <laughs> That's really distinguishing. Adelard usually covers a stump with the sleeve of his shirt or coat. Sometimes he wears a prosthetic. Area of operations, primarily Oatsville. That's right, because in French, it's a silent H. But it is suspected he has contacts throughout Beauclair. One-armed Adelard is suspected of forging at least 50 paintings along with their certificates of authenticity. Said paintings can be found in the collections of private collectors defrauded by Adelard. The forgery was uncovered due to an error on the part of the fraudster. One of his middlemen offered to sell Countess de Busset Belhaven Fields. The Countess immediately alerted the guard, for he had just tried to sell her a painting, which has been in her family for generations. Has this guy been caught already, or are we trying to look for him? Mm. I should double the patrols, just in case. Oh, we can't go out this way. Don't read in the dark. It's bad for your eyes. Audacious rat, the Cintrian. <laughs> but we'll get him. Well, will you stay long? No, I won't. I'm just about to get going. This was like the guard hideout or something. Beauclair Port. Oh, okay. So the next quest we have is the man from Sintra, where we actually, where we go to the party. It is optional for us to put on clothes Anna Henrietta will consider appropriate for the soiree. Easy, easy! The Nilf Guardian set. From the stash. That's all I got. While we're here, do we want to play Gwent and then get out of here? Yeah, master, 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 master. <laughs> How about... Oh, okay. I can get clothing here. Seems like it's from the same guy who we can do Gwent with. So I guess we can do that first. Although I really plan on putting off the main quest for a little bit longer. Ah! Ooh, sorry. It's late at night here. There is all sorts of people on the streets. So we are making some progress with finding out who the blackmailer is. But we're still really far from helping that laugh. Cause we gotta find the woman and make sure she's okay. That twisted not this girl with the ice on his head. It's here. Oh. Get him. oh, there's a bounty on me. These bunch of people all have names. Why am I glowing, by the way? Is that the euphoria or something? I don't have any toxicity right now. The guard just attacked me. <laughs> Kill him, guard. 
Oh, move over. I'll do this. Hmm. Didn't look like locals. Damien's right. I'm a hunted man. They came all the way just to get me. Contract on a Witcher. Hmm, they made me look kind of handsome. I should get a shave. That way, nobody will recognize me, right? Mm -hmm. How does that? <laughs> and the drunk woman still hasn't walked over here yet. Whoa, you guys look kind of dodgy. We're not in a good neighborhood right now. San Sebastian. The nice one is... Otteville. Oh? Prophet Labiota. King of the universe, apparently. Are random people gonna try to attack me wherever I go now then? Or just within Beauclair? Quite the fragrant whiff. What is the pheasantry stewing up? Is the pheasantry even around here? Okay. Oh, what's this house? Hello. Just a random house that I can visit? You got some nice paintings here. Red armor dye. On sound waves. Bats and shalmars. Catechins. A monograph. Few know that sound is in fact not just a noise, but a wave. Just like the waves of a sea striking against the shore. And just like them, sound waves strike everything in their path, which causes them to break. This particular property of sound is used by some species of animals and monsters as they carry out a kind of terrain mapping, using their sense of hearing. Bats, which produce a specific sound to conduct echolocation based on how the sound's waves bounce off potential obstacles, make for a good example of this. Curiously, Shalmars, mighty though completely blind monsters, have developed a similar mechanism. They are able to locate their opponents by sensing the vibration of even the faintest sound wave. We haven't seen bats before, but we got a bestiary entry just now. Catechins. Before we sink our teeth, so to speak, into our analysis of the catechin, the creature to whom the present work is dedicated, by way of introduction, let me present to our less experienced readers what exactly vampires are and what they are not. To our great displeasure, a great many myths concerning these creatures have arisen over the years, and the popular tales about them have served only to make popular superstitions and falsehoods. In the common folk's imagination, vampires are dead men and women arisen from their graves, wraiths driven by an unquenchable thirst for warm blood. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. These creatures first came to be on another world, arrived in ours centuries ago, and have since learned to live among men and have evolved at our side. I mean, technically, it's not even our world, is it? The widespread belief that vampires must drink human blood in order to survive is flat out wrong, though they do in fact often partake of our vital fluid, for human blood affects their physiology as alcohol does ours. Blood and wine. A vampire's bite does not turn its victim into a vampire, a state of affairs which would in fact be counter the logic. For it would mean the world would soon fill with vampires as they multiply at an exponential rate. Running water presents no barrier to vampires, not even if it is cold, for vampires are immune to the forces of both heat and cold. Now for the most important matter, vampires have learned to live in the light of our sun, which is not harmful to them in the least, though they absolutely never shimmer or glisten when struck with the sun's rays. Higher vampires can even turn into gas and stuff. So even if we come across a Sintron later on, there's no guarantee that we'd be able to recognize them. Because I assume that changing their human-looking form is possible, right? If we really go by the theory that the Sintron is the blackmailer, which would probably make him a vampire. Oh, I'm so sorry, there's people here. Just kind of robbing them. In the dead of night. Sorry. 
It's okay though. I'll make good use of this. Oh! Lovely. Okay. Thank you. They even have a baby carriage thing here, but no baby. Just a teddy bear. You guys should probably put some covers on. It gets cold at night. Oh, they have some dress stands. Cool. This house seems really fancy. Stock send the whip away. Our duchy values peace and quiet. There's a guy standing guard right outside that house. Maybe they're important people. And I just robbed them blind. Hmm. <laughs> Locked? This is Beauclair, and everything's peachy. My, do I ever feel like doing absolutely nothing. Same. Nice tune. Nice tune again. So here, from you, it's the Gwent. Oh, but it's probably the same person who will give me the clothing, too. Welcome, good sir. To Dupont and Sons' emporium of diverse merchandise. Satisfaction guaranteed. I've never been here before, have I? Show me what you got back there. Oh! Okay, no attire here, but tons of paintings. What? Aretuza's Tower at Sundown. Ruins of an old fort. Harvest time in White Orchard. Herbalist's Hut. Like Kira Metz's? Van Roe, self-portrait. <laughs> Garbaldi Hagen. Don't know who that is. Auburn Maiden on a Field of Black. The, con the Conception of Edward. Reproduction. Whoa, the colors on this one seem really striking. Matilda's First Steps. Someone's Kid? The Coming of Ludovic. The Beauclair Palace. The Battle of Angyari, 1206. Ship Leaving Harbor, 1220. Spice Merchant. What the hell? <laughs> Et in Covier, Ego, and Bosin. Still Alive. Oh! This is the one that we've seen back in the auction before. Still Alive, I remember it. Knight returning from his quest. Cirilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon. Queen of Sintra. Emir of our Emperor of Nilfgaard. Of course, this is Nilfgaardian territory, so we gotta sell these things. Uh, guess I'll buy Siri at least. But it's only 20 crowns each. I can buy all of them. But I don't have places to keep all of them. Doesn't matter. Maybe we can rotate out once in a while? Or just check out how they all look? Because we can. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> What's with the rest of what you're selling, though? It's kind of incoherent. You have flask? You can have all this stuff. You want perfume? Gold casket? Cool. Elf head? Mugs? Silver caskets? Bronze caskets? Or copper? Copper case. Okay. Cool, thank you. You want some fist tech? It's illegal, right? So if you get caught with this, <laughs> you might have to go to jail or something. So long. You shan't find anything better in all Tucson. What was that just now? We got a quest update. Um, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. Well. Anyway. Did you have anything else back here? All your stock. Welcome, please peruse. The best diverse wares in Tucson at the best prices. Go, go, go. Instead of chatting, why not a quick game of Gwent? I stock the lard of the Duquesa herself. <laughs> okay. What was the card that we got last time again? Another Shield Maiden. Which makes Sarah's really powerful for me now. Do I have any other leader cards? One more. 
Units only lose half their strength in bad weather conditions. No, that's more of a defensive card, right? And it's so situational that I feel like this one would be much better. They have a monster deck. So I'm probably not going to be expecting spies here, but maybe... Muster. That's what the monster deck is really good at, right? Close combat muster. Anyway, Cow, Canby, Gondor Odim, Shield Maiden, Clan on Crate Warrior, which is Tight Bond, War Longship, Tight Bond, Ermion, Yalmar, Ceres, Siri. So we have a very Skellige ish deck, I guess, with Hjalmar and Saris. These two, though, they're tight bond, but they don't have anything to be tight bonded with. That's a bit of a problem. These two are zeros until the next round, so that's kind of not good either. Um, I'll take my chances and maybe take away. Okay, well, first of all, I have Saris, so I don't need the Shield Maiden. Commander's Horn. I'll take away the War Longship. Because I'm pretty sure I have two War Longships, but I have three Clan on Cray Warriors. Oh my god! Well, I suppose worse things have happened. Whoa, I really don't feel good about today's deck. And this whole time, I've still never freaking activated a Berserker before. That kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? Maybe I can, like, Commander's Horn that or something? Karen. I feel like we definitely need to rely on a third round today because our deck is... kinda garbage. Our hand, I mean. Plus, if I spend the first round using the Cow and Cambi, then it's gonna be zeros. Oh, look at that. We can't beat that. I might be able to rely on Ceres for one round, but one round, no more than that. Oh, frick, they have a Commander's Horn. 60 to 12. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Oh, we're, we're not going to be able to win. They still have seven cards, more than me. In fact, I'm starting to feel like I shouldn't even have put down the Gondro Dims to begin with. <laughs> That's how bad I feel right now. Dang. Mm-hmm. They win. But now we start off the second round with the Bovine Defense Force and Hemdal. Which gives us 19. A cool 19. But one Ericus is enough to overturn that. <laughs> 22 to 19. We have to win this round. Do I use Sarah's this round or not? I think I should save it for the last round if possible. Just thinking here, if I only have one non-hero card, then I should use it now and use the Commander's Horn on that row, since we have the Bovine Defense Force here. Mm -hmm. Oh! Mm, in this case, I don't even need to put down the Commander's Horn, and in my graveyard, there is a bunch of crap, Let's use the leader ability right now. Am I doing this right? And then I will pass. Maybe there's some hope for us. I don't know yet. Oh! Oh, but the, the bovine defense force, it doesn't actually go to the graveyard. Because I only got this one back. Dang. Well, not much we could do about that, I suppose. Would have loved to Commander's Horn them both, but hmm. That's something we gotta keep in mind for the future then, because I didn't know that. I thought they just go to the graveyard like a normal card. But Hemdal's not here either. I just want to save Saris for last, because I don't know how much we're going to get out of that. Oh! Oh! We can also put the Commander's Horn on the Shield Maidens that come out of Saris. That might be our key to win here. We'll really have to see. Oh! Oh, God! Okay, that's horrible. 
but I'm really glad that happened before I put Sarah's down. Yeah? Um... Shield Maiden is a close combat card, right? I don't know. I was wondering if I should put the commander's horn down first, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. Oh, and they have tight bond. 12, 12, 12, which actually leads to 36. Plus Sarah's 10. Wow, so Sarah's alone actually gives 46. That's insane. Plus commander's horn. 115. Hey, not so bad at all, huh? Are we gonna be able to do it? Yes! Oh my gosh! Judging by how crappy the cards we got were, I didn't think we could do this. I'm glad to see that's not the case, though. Clan you Demon Pirate. Anything better in all Tucson. <laughs> and now we have 14 out of the 19 battles down for Gwent. Slowly but surely making it to the end here. And then we gotta go through the tournament and all that. 